What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing these two chubby Pikachu clones in the Open Great League. Dedene and Toga Damaru are both featured spawns in the current Festival of Light event here in Pokemon Go, so we're going to be seeing how they perform in the Go Battle League. They have some unique subtypings in Fairy and Steel, and those are two of the best typings in the game, so is that enough to make them meta in the Great League? I'm going to tell you right now that they are brilliant core breakers to quite a lot of teams, but unfortunately in the Open Great League meta as things stand, there are so many Pokemon, common Pokemon, very meta Pokemon that absolutely wall the electric typing, meaning it's very difficult to run these Pokemon, and especially not when you're running them both on the same team. You'll see in the background here that a lot of the teams that I went up against had two or even three Pokemon that were extremely strong up against the electric typing. And when you think that Galarian, Stunfisk, Swampert and Trevelyan are all ranked in the top four Pokemon on PV Poke in the Open Great League, it makes a lot of sense that a lot of teams are going to be having counters to these electric type Pokemon. And aside from that, you've also got Nidoqueen and Diggersby, which are also very common. So it's extremely hard to run these Pokemon. And also because their subtypings are very different, they're going to have different weaknesses aside from that ground weakness. So Togedemaru weak to fighting types. So we can't really have something in the lead that also doesn't do very well up against fighting types. And likewise, we've got Dedene, which is weak to the poison typing. We need something in the lead that can cover that and so we are going to be running Drifwim does resist the poison and fighting typing so I think it is the best Pokemon that I could use in the lead unfortunately it still does lose to Pokemon like Trevor and Stunfisk but it can put up a fight so that is probably the best thing that I can have in the lead it's very difficult to cover all the weaknesses of the Pokemon in the back and I'm going to tell you now that this team didn't perform very well but I did get some insane wins which I will be showing in this video and on top of that I actually made quite a lot of really bad mistakes that I'm also going to include because you guys can learn from it I'm certainly going to learn from it and I hope that this will be able to help you and with that being said let's get into the question of the day which typing sees the least amount of play in the current Open Great League meta? Let me know in the comment section below and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle here, we lead Drifblim into Trevenant, so one of the core breakers here definitely beats my entire backline, so I need to see it in the lead, but it also does beat Drifblim, so very difficult here they also bait me with a seed bomb which is not great we're gonna bait our own and we go for an icy wind here icy wind is still super effective so it doesn't really matter if they call the bait or not because it's still gonna do damage we call the bait here they do go for a seed bomb we're gonna go for another icy wind here hopefully i get the second shield and i do i'm gonna swap into dna hopefully they don't have a galarian stunfisk or another counter to my electric types it doesn't look like they do they stay in with trevenant they go for a shadow ball we're gonna over farm here go for a discharge hopefully this KOs the Trevenant and unfortunately it doesn't they get to another charge move but this is a double debuff seed bomb so we can tank that fine and they have a wall rain in the back so you're going to see here where dead and a is a massive core breaker for my opponent's team we go for the discharge they're at the Icicle Spear now, so we throw straight away. They do go for an extra Powder Snow, and they have a Scrafty in the back. So we're gonna catch here on the Drift Limb, but this might not be the best catch here because they go for a Power Punch, and now they're gonna be able to get a ton of energy in my Drift Limb, and now we are in a tricky situation here. I'm gonna come back in with the Toga Tomorrow this time, hoping they would throw straight away, and they do, and that allows me to get to a Wild Charge now because they go for a Power Punch. Wild Charge does huge damage to the Scrafty. We did have that Discharge loaded. We win the CMP tie up against the Scrafty and we're able to take them out there and take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. You see Dedene there, very good up against that opponent's team there. Into the next game, we see a Shadow Swamper in the lead. So once again, this is where we want to see it. It's kind of a neutral matchup, but we do double resist the Mud Shots here. And we're going to shield the first Hydra Cannon there. Maybe my opponent is going to expect me to go for an Icy Wind now, but we go for the Shadow Ball and it does get shielded, which is unfortunate. At this point, I can't really double shield straight away in this lead matchup because I don't know what they have in the back. I'm going to go for the Icy Wind straight away. Just make sure I get off this damage. 
Icy Wind does land. My opponent actually swaps into a Sableye there, and I kind of misplayed there. Go into the Toga Damaru here, but thinking that they might have another Dark type, possibly a Scrafty or something, so I do swap in here. They let the Wild Charge go through. I'm going to let the Foul Play go through, and now I'm going to come in with the Dead NA, and we're going to see what we can do here. I should be able to Thundershock farm them down, not before they get to a Charge move though. This is just a Foul Play, so I will let it go through. And now I'm thinking, wait, they're running Swampert in the lead. They've almost definitely got a Skarmory in the back. So we should be fine here. We win the CMP tie up against this Swampert. Although they are now on a four cycle here. So I'm going to switch, catch the charge move on the Drift Limb. Perfect timing there. Zwart Hydro Cannon takes us out. We're going to come back in with the Dedene there. We over farm as much as possible. They come in with their Skarmory here. Two discharges will be enough to take out the Skarmory. So I'm going to over farm as much as possible. Go for the second. Second discharge here and we are one Thundershock away from the next move and we do get there up against this Swampert and we're going to be able to take out the Swampert and take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. And into the next game here, we're going to lead Driftblim into Nidoqueen here. So once again, this is exactly where we need to see it. <laughs> they say swap into a Zangoose. I thought it was going to be a Lickitung. So I swap into the Toga Tomaru. And unfortunately, this is going to be a losing matchup here. They bait me with a Night Slash. It doesn't matter. That would have still done huge damage. We go for a bait of our own. Go for the Wild Charge. We lose the CMP tie. I'm going to call the Night Slash here. It's a close combat. Close combat takes me out. And yeah, this is not good. We don't have the alignment we need. Although we do resist everything here on the Dedene, so I will no shield. They go for another close combat. I'm still not going to be able to Thundershock farm them down. They actually swap into a Wigglytuff here. So Wigglytuff, obviously charm damage going to do huge damage, but it does mean that I now have alignment again. We're going to come in with the Drift Bloom. Unfortunately, they double resist the Hex damage, so this is not great. We are going to have to go for an Icy Wind because those charms would start to add up. They actually come back in with the Nido Queen here. I'm going to go for an Icy Wind. Icy Wind goes unshielded, but it still doesn't do enough to take them out. They're going to get to a Poison Fang. We can't shield here, but they're going to be able to get to another Poison Fang, and I just don't have enough health to take out both the Nido Queen and the Zangoose there, so I do lose that game. So a big mistake there, trying to swap out as fast as possible and not waiting to see what Pokemon actually came in. Into the next game, we lead into a Shadow Razor Leaf Victory Bell here, so we can pretty much guarantee they've got a Bastion on in the back because that's what people like to use. We're going to no shield here, calling an acid spray. It is an acid spray. They come in with Bastidon. We do wait to see that it's definitely a Bastidon this time. And then we come in with the Toga Demaru. We're going to shield this up. It is going to be a flamethrower. We might live it, but there's no point taking that risk. We are going to be lowering our defense here with the Wild Charge. It does a lot of damage, but Bastidon actually tanks that very comfortably. We're going for a very risky bait here with the Fell Stinger. And we get the shield, which is perfect. We're going to over farm, go for a Wild Charge just before they get to the next charge move and wild charge still doesn't take out the bassidon that thing is so freaking tanky we're going to shield the flamethrower here my opponent swaps into i think a medicham we're going for the wild charge wild charge does big damage we did single stage boost our attack there so that is great we're going to come in with the Dedene here, go for the Discharge straight away. This is going to be enough to take out the Medicham from this range. They're going to come back in with the Victory Bell. We swap, go for an Icy Wind. We take out the Victory Bell and I'm able to Hex, farm down the Bastiodon and take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we lead into another Nido Queen. So once again, this is where we need to see it. They swap into a Sableye. So I'm going to save swap or counter swap into my Dedene here. We get to the charge move on the CMP tie with the return. Play rough, goes unshielded. We take them out. We have that switch advantage, but Nido Queen is going to get a very nice poison jab farm down. And we are going to go for a play rough here. It doesn't warrant a shield, but it should put them into range where I can go for an Icy Wind. And that will nearly do enough to take out this Nido Queen. We're already reading that it's going to be a Scrafty in the back because Nido Queen Double Dark is a very common team composition. So I'm actually going to go for an Icy Wind here. And if they do shield this up, I'm actually going to try and swap and catch the next Poison Fang on the Toga tomorrow. And I am able to do that. All we're going to do here is bait out the Scrafty if they are running it, which they are. And now I should be able to go for a Wild Charge on the CMP tie with a Power Punch if they threw here. We go for the Wild Charge. It goes unshielded and as well. 
they do throw their energy. They're going to undercharge here, very smart play there. Does give them a few extra counters worth before they take me out. This is actually still too soon to be a foul play, so I'm going to no shield it. It is just a power punch, and at this point, we are triple resisting their counter damage. I really should over farm as much as possible, because now we're only single resisting these poison jabs, and this Nidoqueen Queen does have poison fang, so even though we're lowering their attack, they're going to respond by lowering my defense. And now, am I going to be able to get to one more Icy Wind? No, I am not, and we do go down there with a shield remaining. All we could have done to win that game is over farm up against the Scrafty, maybe shield the next charge move, and then come out with a ton of energy to take on that Nido Queen. But going into the next game, GG's to that opponent by the way, we lead into an Araquanid. All three Pokemon are very strong up against this lead, but we're going to stay in initially, go for a Shadow Ball. Maybe, maybe we're going to wait for another Bubble Beam and then eventually swap into the Dedene because we are, of course, running an ABB style team. We're actually going to go for another Shadow Ball here. Maybe not the best play because we are double debuffed at this point. We're going to swap into the Dedene now, catch the charge move. It is just a bubble beam. They're going to come in with a talent flame. We're going to over farm as much as possible. Go for the CMP tie here. We have the back to back discharges available. And at this point, I think I am going to shield up this charge move. Probably could have just let it go through because we will still get to another discharge anyway. But. We get to the discharge here and my opponent is just barely going to outpace me to the next charge move. There's no point shielding this up. Flame charge takes me out. I'm going to come back in with the Drift Bloom, I believe. Go for a Shadow Ball and from this range, I'm really hoping Shadow Ball is going to be enough to take them out. And it is enough. They're going to come in with a Galarian Stunfisk. This is very tricky. We're going to over farm here, waiting for them to try and throw the Rock Slide. We tried to catch the move, but either way, we're going to force them to throw an Earthquake. Earthquake one-shots the Toga Damaru there. So if anything, Toga Damaru was used as a sacrificial or a, an extra shield, I guess. So we're going to shield up this Rock Slide here. Got to be very careful that my opponent doesn't catch the move. So I do wait one turn. They don't catch. So I go for the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball takes out the Galarian Stunfisk. Fist, and I'm going to be able to hex farm down the Drift Blim and take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. And into the next game here, we lead into an Azumarill. So we do have two Pokemon that are going to be much better up against Azumarill. So I'm going to swap here, trying to catch the charge move. My opponent doesn't throw their energy. They're going to come in with a Shadow Alolan Marowak here. We're going for one discharge. That does a decent amount of damage and should put them into range where this second discharge is going to get a shield from my opponent. And we are able to here. I'm going to shield up this charge move here. It's just a bone club. It wouldn't quite take me out, but I'm hoping they're going to over farm, but they don't and they get to the next charge move. I'm going to let this go through. Bone club still doesn't KO, but unfortunately I'm not able to get the discharge off because the mechanic there is a bit inconsistent. So sometimes you're able to get the move off, sometimes you're not. And unfortunately this time I wasn't able to. I go for the icy wind pretty much straight away there, hoping that it probably wouldn't KO and that I could over farm a bit. They swap into a zoom roll. I catch the charge move on the Toga Damaru. It is resisted. I'm going to over farm here. This should just be another play rough or maybe even an ice beam. They go for the play rough. We're going to keep on over farming here. Go for the wild charge. We have the back to back loaded. This first wild charge takes out the Azumarill. The second one is going to do massive damage or get a shield versus Hableye. They actually let it go through, which is perfect because I have enough energy where I can go for the back-to-back -back Icy Winds. The first one is going to be getting the shield from the Sableye, and as long as they don't have the back-to-back, -back, we should be fine. I'm not really sure who wins CMP in this matchup, but they don't have the back-to-back -back anyway, so I can go for a second Icy Wind. An Icy Wind is enough to take out the Sableye, and I take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we lead Drifblim into another Azumarill. So we're going to play this exactly the same. Try to catch the Ice Beam. It's very unlikely that they do throw the Ice Beam straight away. But that doesn't really matter. They've actually farmed up to a Hydro Pump here. I'm going to let it go through. Hydro Pump does huge damage. But they switch into an Umbreon. So they're very obviously core broken by this Dedene. So I'm going to go for the Play Rough there. They do shield it up. I'm thinking I won't be able to get to another Play Rough if I let the move go through and it's a dark pulse so we actually would have been able to get to the play rough if we did shield so maybe a mistake there by me they're going to get to another charge move and at this point I have to start shielding unfortunately the Toga Damaru doesn't resist the dark type damage so we do shield up a dark pulse 
We go for the Wild Charge. It does decent damage. We swap and we CMP tie on the Icy Wind here. The thing is, I realize that Drifblim isn't the best up against this team, but Togedemaru looks like it's also a very strong core breaker. Actually, I was wrong. They have a Trevenant, so they had a pretty good response to the dead NA there. Maybe anticipating that I was running double electric, I'm not really sure, but we're not out of the clear yet. We're gonna no shield, call the bait, and it is just a seed bomb. We're gonna go for a fell stinger here. This will boost our attack, and hopefully from this range, now a wild charge will be enough to take out the Trevenant. We're going for it, it takes out the Trevenant, and at this point we should be fine all we have to do is build to the back-to-back -back wild charges but i didn't realize i still had a shield remaining and i go for the cmp tie here and unfortunately we're gonna go down to the bubble damage once again the mechanic doesn't allow me to get the charge move off and i lose that game when i could have easily won if i just farmed to the back-to-back -back charge moves and uh, I threw that game away, unfortunately, so GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we lead into an Alola Ninetales, say swap into the Dedene, and we're met with a Swamper. So this isn't nearly as bad as Galarian Stunfist because that play rough actually did quite a lot of damage, but unfortunately a Hydro Cannon doesn't take us out and they're able to mud shot farm me down. We're going to come back in with the Drift Blim here, and unfortunately they do outpace us to the charge move. And uh, that was very good timing by my opponent. And at this point, I'm thinking, actually, you know what? There's no point throwing. Let's just hex farm them down. We will shield once, but we'll come out with a ton of loaded energy. We're going to go straight for the Shadow Ball. There's no point baiting. It's too risky. Shadow Ball does get a shield. I'm going to swap into the Toga Tamaru. And we call break their team with the Toga Tamaru because they've got an Empoleon in the back. Are they going to call the bait? They do. And we one shot them with the Wild Charge. Now we're going for the bait. Excuse me, we get the shield with the Fell Stinger, and at this point we should be in the clear. We've boosted our attack, and now Wild Charge will do huge damage up against this Alola Nine Ninetales. Will this be enough to take them out? Yes it is, and we're able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we lead Driftblim into a Toxapex, so this is actually a pretty good lead for us though. It is a very bulky Pokemon, so it, we still are not super in the clear. As well, we do have the Toga Damari, which does very well up against Toxapex, but the Dedene does struggle because of that poison type damage. We're gonna let the first move go through. We are gonna overfarm here, and unfortunately, I just don't know the counts for Poison Jab and Brian. I have no idea how much energy Brian is. They're gonna swap into a Trevenant, so it's actually kind of good that we did shield there. We're gonna go to back-to-back -back Icy Winds, expecting them to double shield in this matchup. And they actually let the second one go through, so maybe a misplay there, but they are double debuffed, so at this point, we should be able to Thunder Shock farm them down. They're going to go for a Shadow Ball. They're going to be able to get to a Seed Bomb here. So I'm actually going to swap and catch the Charge move on the Togedemaru. This is resisted. It's double debuffed and it doesn't do very much damage at all. They're going to come in with Scrafty. Once again, we're going to go for a CMP tie on the Power Up Punch. And from this range, Wild Charge does big damage, but they know not to shield it because we do have that Dedene. We could easily one-shot them with a Play Rough. This is going to be very close here. We need to get to back-to-back -to -back Charge moves at all times just in case they try try to swap back into the Toxapex because Poison Jab will do big damage. We shield a Power Up Punch. Can we get to the back-to-back -back moves? Unfortunately not. That final counter does take me out and I do lose that game. So very close, but definitely made some mistakes in that battle. Into the next game, we lead into a Medicham and they're going to swap into a Galarian Stunfist. So we need to just stay in here and we need alignment for sure because if we can get the Dedene paired up against that Medicham, we should still be okay. We're going to go for an Icy Wind. I don't expect them to shield the first one, but it does debuff their attack, meaning I will be able to survive two Rock Slides from this range, just barely. We're now going to go for a Shadow Ball. Will they respect the damage from this Shadow Ball? They actually do and they shield it up. I'm able to get to another charge roof here we're going for another icy wind perhaps should have just gone for another shadow ball because they no shield it but once again that does mean i will be able to survive the damage from this rock side and i do have the icy wind here so i'm able to get to the move here and i am able to take out the galarian stunfisk i'm not sure if i'll make a shadow ball so i go for the icy wind my opponent no shields it, so massive balls on this opponent. We are now having the perfect alignment, and we actually have a massive core breaker to their team. I'm going to swap, try catch the return, but our fast moves were out of sync because they swapped out. 
I know Shield is a return and I've just thrown away another game just playing really poorly here. All I had to do was either swap and catch the move or just shield up the charge move. We know we had a really good match up there up against both Pokemon. We're going for the wild charge. It gets shielded. We need to over farm, but unfortunately they're at another foul play. And foul play up against my debuff defense easily enough to take me out and I do lose that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we lead into a Swampert. So as usual, this is where we want to see it. We're going to over farm here, allowing my or my opponent allowing me to get a full hex through there for free we're now going to go for a shadow ball hopefully my opponent does let this go through and they do and now they're in range for me to hex farm them down we're going to let the second hydra kind of go through and we're going to see what we're met with here they come in with bastard on so i'm going to swap safe swap into the dedene here really hoping that they switch out of this matchup but they don't and it looks like they are going to just go for the charge move here I will, I will be able to survive a Stone Edge and get to another Discharge here, but this really isn't going to do an awful lot of damage to the Bastidon. It's a very bulky Pokemon, and they're able to farm me down. Now I'm going to wait out my Switch Clock and then come in with the Togedemaru here, and I'm actually going to go for a CMP tie with this Bastidon's Flamethrower, see what they want to do. Do they want to preserve the health? They decide not to. They have a Talonflame in the back, so I farm up to four... Thunder Shocks there, avoiding the damage from the second incinerate. Go for an Icy Wind bait, poor timing, but I'm able to get through a Shadow Ball. This will do huge damage, and it puts them into range where I think I can Thunder Shock farm them down, but they barely survive. And now at this point, I have to go for a Charge Move. Charge Moves do one damage when they're shielded. Do they have one HP remaining? Yes, they do, because I'm able to K them through, KO them through the shield, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there, extremely close game, and into the final battle of this video, we lead into a Hypno, so we should have a pretty good matchup here, but Hypno, typically gonna run Thunder Punch or Ice Punch, so not the best matchup, because they can hit for massive, super effective damage with these punches, and as well, the confusion damage is really adding up, so I'm gonna swap here, catch the next Thunder Punch on my Dedene here. Thunder Punch is resisted, that's fine. They swap into the Galarian Stunfisk. This is not great for me. We're gonna no shield here, it's just a rock side, but unfortunately this does mean that they're gonna be able to fully mud shot farm me down, which is the worst case scenario. I would prefer if they just went straight for the Earthquake, because now they're gonna come out with a ton of loaded energy, and these play roughs are gonna put them low enough that I can take them out with one charge move from the Drift Limb, but this is not great. And we actually had an icy wind here. We could have thrown it here and then made sure that the rock side wouldn't take us out. But now we are going to throw the rock side here. Oh, the icy wind, sorry. And that does debuff their attack. I'm really hoping I'm going to be able to get to another charge move here up against the Stunfisk. Can we get there? Unfortunately, we die on the charge move and that is going to be game over. I just conceded the match there. Nothing I could do. GG's to that opponent there. So that is going to be it for today's video. Unfortunately, I didn't perform very well. I think I went negative. I think I went 2-3 in pretty much every single set apart from one where I did go 3-2. and two. So overall, not very good. And it wasn't just the team compositions that were beating me. I also made a ton of mistakes which I, I do normally make but I don't make as many as I did in this video so very disappointed with my own gameplay but sometimes that does happen and we can learn from those mistakes and hopefully you guys can learn from them too but if you did enjoy today's video then make sure you leave a like leave a comment let me know and as well don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already and if you want to see more content like this in the future and you're not yet subscribed then make sure you hit that subscribe button turn on post notifications so that way you're notified whenever i upload a new video and with that being said let's get into the shout outs from my previous video so firstly we've got rf who says definitely chandelure it's been featured a bit in the master premier classic and it's one of my favorite pokemon to use in that cup it's extremely squishy a non-stab rock slide from gfix does over 80 percent of his health but with shields up it's an absolute wrecking ball and with a shield advantage chandelure is almost unstoppable and i actually have one built for all three leagues i think it's really strong unfortunately yesterday's community day really doesn't help it out because poltergeist just isn't a very good move you're definitely gonna prefer shadow ball or even energy ball on the chandelure next we got not cyclo who says shadow lugia sounds like fun and a spicy pokemon to run in the great league or ultra league and finally we got richard barker who says i think male metal in the great league is highly underrated especially with hyper beam so with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of your day